Thank you, um, Jeff. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you, Intrac. Happy 20 years. Um, as somebody said this morning, you have reached adulthood by the life cycle of civil society organizations. I would say you are in your middle age. Um, <clears throat> because normally by the time you are, <clears throat> you are almost completed your half-life, uh, as they say in physics. Um, so what do you do when you are a middle age? <clears throat> you have um, some responsibilities towards your offspring, uh, whether you produce them knowingly or otherwise. And um, you have a few more productive years to go before you sort of acquire a guru-like uh, institutional position. So I want to uh, take off from where Ingrid left, uh, having so eloquently presented the scenario we are in and the challenge that we all face as part of civil society, um, to bring the question <clears throat> to all of us, in particular to in track about uh, its core business, <clears throat> which uh, has been variously defined as capacity enhancement or development. It is true that 20 years ago when Intrac was founded, there was hope. There was fall of Soviet Union. There was a triumph of both democracy and free market simultaneously. And in fact, the phraseology of civil society was resurrected. It had been forgotten since the times of Gramsci before the World War II. And uh, in the process, as uh, <clears throat> many people in the audience uh, have themselves realized and articulated, we rapidly changed many of our organizational labels from voluntary organizations, non-profit organizations, non-governmental organizations, development organizations, non-government development organizations, and called ourselves civil society organizations. In fact, uh, even uh, <clears throat> departments in bilateral agencies became civil society departments, um, without, of course, reference to DFID. So when Intrac was born, <clears throat> In a way, civil society was reborn. The discourse on civil society was uh, energetic. And somehow it was positioned as counter to the state. It was positioned as a movement of the people to throw away authoritarian regimes, you know, military dictatorships, single party rules, and somehow usher in free market and uh, multi-party elected governments. So one of the consequences of that was that by the mid-90s, the amount of bilateral assistance, ODA, moving through so-called NGO fraternity or civil society fraternity had been, had increased substantially. And um, many of us working in uh, organizations in the South increasingly realized that our <clears throat> solidarity partners in Europe and North America are now operating with larger and larger budgets. I remember talking to Brian 30 years ago when he was in Oxfam, that Oxfam used to say, and you know, reference to Oxfam in Oxford is appropriate, I guess, um, that uh, <clears throat> in those days Oxfam used to say, <clears throat> we raise our resources from the people and we don't accept government funding. And by the late 90s, I would guess that 
the proportion had changed dramatically. So as a result, uh, with more resources, with more visibility, with more opportunity to engage in um, work with governments, both in the North and South, there came Intrac to build the capacity. It began to build capacity of international NGOs and their staff, sometimes their partners in the South, on important issues, planning, monitoring, evaluation, more sophisticated strategic planning, organizational change, organizational development. I recently noticed uh, advanced organizational development. <laughs> Important as it was, and some of us uh, liked it, and we also began to do the same. Now, as Ingrid so clearly articulated, we are living in a different world. Now, what does, therefore, capacity imply in this world of today? We are living in a world where both free market capitalism and democracy are in some ways failing, failing deeply. And first of all, they are failing in those countries and societies where they were born. We are only the, we have imported it, you have exported it. So now democracy is not working. People protest against policies of their governments. Governments do whatever they like, at least for four or five years. Uh, same thing happens with free market. Uh, many people, uh, I hope none of you have lost your pension fund, um, but I can assure you, you will get 10% return if you invest with me. <laughs> so, we are also talking about a situation where the fulcrum of economic strength has shifted out from Europe and North America into our part of the world. Uh, if you look around uh, <clears throat> in the last uh, 10 years, the sovereign funds in our regions hold many of the debts that you have accumulated. Last week, uh, IMF was talking to Brazilian finance minister and he said, yeah, we will finance some of the European debt provided we get a different quota in IMF. So we are in a different world. Now, in that different world, what is the implication of capacity? First of all, as Ingrid pointed out, many of our organizations are experiencing a sense of disconnect from our local civic energy, citizen movement, spontaneous assertions, and therefore, the first and foremost capacity we need is to connect with our own civic initiatives in our own backyard, so to speak. It is even more challenging for those of us who work in international organizations originally rooted in European soil or North American soil. Because all kinds of civic initiatives, all kinds of civic assertions are taking place in your own countries and uh, you may need to therefore reconnect with them somehow. So first and foremost is the capacity to connect with your own roots or reconnect with your own roots. 